Hey everyone, in this video, I'll show you one of the most popular time series forecasting models out there, Facebook Profit. The script that we'll build together will be available for you in the description uh, of the video. If you are interested in knowing more about what I do, there is this link in the description as well to my secret discount portal where you get discounts for all of my online courses on Udemy and on the Zero to Mastery platform. And with this, we can continue. And the first thing that we need to do is to import libraries. So import pandas SPD and then from and then FB profit import profit. So let's do control enter here and then we get the data and i've stored the data for anyone to actually use it so pandas dot read underscore csv and then hdps colon two slashes bit dot ly and then slash udemy and then data frame here we go and then, so let me do control enter first, and then I store it. And here you go. You can see here we have the date, and then we have the Udemy Wikipedia page visits per day. So this is our case study. Data frame equals two, and then data frame dot hat. So control enter. And now that we have the libraries and the data, we go to the data preparation. One thing that the date format needs to be in something very specific. So currently it's in month, day, and then year, and it needs to change a bit. So what we do is data frame dot date equals to we use pandas to date time, and then we specify data frame dot date, and here the format it currently has. So format equals to, and then inside quotes so it's percent month so we start with month and then it's a slash and then percent day and then slash and so slash and then percent and then capital y because we have one and then one right so the month with just one digit the day with just one digit but the year comes with a four digit so it's not in the simple form that's why you put a capital Y. And then we can have a look at our data frame at uh, hand, just so that you see the outcome. And here you go. You see that the date is now in this format. So year, hyphen, month, hyphen, day, which is the most common. And this is how it should be. Another peculiarity is that we need to rename variables. And the way that it works, so data frame equals to data frame dot rename is that so columns the date a variable so this needs to be called inside a dictionary so the date needs to be called ts and then the y so the time series the udemy needs to be called y so this is how it works data frame dot head and just yeah with zero observations let's have a look and here you go so we have data frame y easter and christmas and then the last step is creating this training and test so training equals two and then data frame dot i lock and i'm just going to leave 31 days for the test set so up until minus 31 and then i want all of the columns and then I do the same. So let me just put here the test. So test equals two, and then starting from minus 31. And here we go. Let me do control enter. And with all of this done, we can then build the model. So FB model. So M equals two. We use the profit function. And here you go. And you don't actually need to include anything in general. Let me just do control enter to show you. So here you're just you know starting to build the model. Of course, there's a lot of parameters, but for now I won't go into detail. 
And then we add the regressors, which can be Easter and then m dot add underscore regressor and then we include christmas which were the other two columns that were here easter and christmas and then all of this so m and then we fit to the training so control enter and here we go and as you can see it's running and it is built then we can move to the predictions. So we need to create a future data frame. So future data frame. And to do it, we just do future equals to. We use the model with the function make future data frame. And here we go. Open parenthesis periods equals to and then 31, and then we set the frequency. So frequency equals to daily with a capital D. Here we go. So if I look here at my future, let's do control enter, and here you go. So now one thing that we also need is to add here our regressors. Because you can see it starts from the beginning of 2016 all the way until the end of 2020. So future equals to we use pandas to concat and then we start here a list we include the future and here we join to the data frame dot alloc and here starting from index position two so zero one and then two onwards i want all of this in my future data frame here we go so two colon and this is it now let me change here so colon then a comma and now we can have a look once more at the future. Control enter, and here we go. I see here that I forgot something, so it did not, you know, concatenate it as I would have liked. One thing that you need to add here afterwards is comma and then axis equals to one. Because here what happened is that it added beneath uh, my future. And what I need to add is more of a, you know, columns added to the right. So let's do control enter, see what happens. And here we go. So now it looks much nicer with zeros, no NAs, no anything. It's looking great. Now I'm going to close this and I'm going to do the forecasting. So forecasting, which is super, super simple. So forecast equals to use the model to predict and then here I just include the future. Here we go, future, control enter. And next up, we can move to the final part of this tutorial. So we start with the visualization. So of the forecast, let me just include here forecast this. And here we go, we use the model, we plot the forecast. Let's do control enter. And it may happen that we have two. Yes, we have two graphs. So you need to put here a semicolon. And this makes it so that we just get one graph. And we see here, our forecast is actually, you know, matching the values we see here, like a lot of outliers. So here and also here at the end of 2020. And there are also some outliers here at the end of 2017. But all in all, it seems to be okay, right? So it seems to capture the general seasonality and trend of our data. And with this, so we move on to the last plotting of the components. So plot components, and then we use the model, and then plot underscore components open parenthesis, and then we include here the forecast. Here we go, forecast, and then a semicolon, control enter, and here we go. We can see here the trend, so this is the first graph, and you can see it's growing over time, and this looks great. We see here the weekly seasonality, and here you go, so Sunday and Saturday would be the lowest, and then Monday all the way through Thursday, these would be, you know, the general seasonality. So this is when people 
I'm actually searching more for Udemy. So this is super, uh, super interesting. Then we have the yearly seasonality, which is not so well defined. So I think there's really something that's messing this up. So it's not looking great. Of course, we may have some inherent uh, variability in the data here. And because there's not a lot of daily Wikipedia page visits, this makes it so that the seasonal curves are not so easily detectable. And then lastly, we have the impact of the regressors here. We see that our Easter usually has a higher impact than the Easter, which instead appears to have a positive impact. And with this, we are done. It's a bit long just to make this simple model, but I think it's totally worth it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, have fun.